Hello everyone, John Richmond here with the Eclectic Cooking Academy. Today, part two of a two-part series on essential cooking equipment as we dive into what it takes to be a pro chef in our Cook Like a Pro series. Hang in there with me, three seconds and I'll be right back. All right. Let's get on with it. Today we're going to talk about, uh, well, we talk about more essential cooking equipment, things that I feel are essential in the kitchen to help you cook like a pro. A lot of these things you very likely have around. Have you been using them? That's kind of a question. And if you don't have them, it's things you might want to consider obtaining. The first one is, and you probably have one of these, and that's this style of blender. You know, sits on a motor down here. This is probably the most universal uh, type of blender that I would recommend, especially if you've only got room for one, budget for one, whatever. This is the one that's probably going to serve you best of all the different kinds of things that are out there. Um, the next one I want to show you is a stick blender. This is a somewhat recent purchase for me. I, it's one of those kinds of things where I'm going to put it in a little bit of a non-essential category, but it's one of those kinds of tools where when you need one, it's really nice to have. And it's really especially good for sauces and type, those kinds of things, where instead of having to take whatever you got in your pan, put it into your blender, get everything pureed, this you can just stick down in there and blend it up, no transfer required. This cleans up really, really quickly. I really enjoyed having that. A fine mesh strainer. If you don't have one of these things, then I would recommend you find one a little bit larger than this one. I mean, it serves me, and it's one of those kind of things where I get by with it, and I've just never really been particularly motivated to go out and get one a, a larger size. Although, certainly at times, a larger one would be nice. Why do you need one of these things? Well, there's going to come a time, um, well, we have a whole section on stocks. And when we get to that section, which isn't all that far away, one of the things we'll need to do is to strain those stocks. And you'll want to be running them through a strainer like this. First, a larger type strain strainer that I'm sure you have around the house everybody's going to have some kind of strainer. That's going to take out all the big stuff. And then something like this is going to help really take out some more of the impurities. Maybe even one a little bit finer than that one. Um, but this one works, and uh, it's something that you'll, you'll really want to consider having in your kitchen. Spice storage. Okay. So for this one, we're going to take a little break and go for a little walk as I go around the corner to show you what I use for spice storage, and maybe you have room for it. Regardless of whether you do and whether you choose to do something like the rack system that I have, you're going to need some place to store spices. So be right back. All right, so please bear with me. I'm using my laptop today. So this is my rack system for spices. And you can see it goes all the way down to the floor, including filling up the floor with various things as well. So that rack system is something that basically I couldn't live without. I first purchased one of those in my former home uh, before we moved here to Arizona. Uh, that one I was able to keep in our walk-in pantry. Boy, I missed that. Anyway, this one's around the corner in what we call our storage room. And that's where I keep all of my spices, etc. Uh, the thing is, is that I think for you to become an eclectic cook, and what I mean by that is someone who's covers lots of different types of cuisines. I cook from around the world. There's, I don't even, I don't think there's anything that I haven't really tried to cook. Um, and I suppose if there is, it probably would be African dishes. I don't think I've branched out uh, into that. Uh, I don't think there's any particular reason why, other than just 
I, I just haven't. Um, maybe that's something I need to think about making a priority out of. Anyway, uh, in order to go cook the world cuisines, it does mean that you kind of got to expand into some of the things those world cuisines use. And so having a diverse pantry also means that you kind of need to have a diverse palate to go along with it. So if you can't find yourself or see yourself taking in uh, German food or different kinds of Italian food or Mediterranean food, Greek food, uh, Asian food all across the world, then I guess you probably won't need that. But in the cooking lessons that we'll be following, um, I will be delving into many of those types of cuisines. Next up is an item that I imagine that you're probably familiar with, and that is, it's not a paintbrush, it's called pastry, pastry brush. And uh, two primary purposes uh, in savory cooking, one that I'm sure you're most familiar with, and that would be spreading around mar um, sauces and stuff out there on the grill, whether it's a little additional marinade or a barbecue sauce or that type of thing, certainly needed for that. Another thing is, is when we are doing, uh, working with dough in uh, savory cooking, then there'll be times where we want to go put on uh, what's called an egg wash. Basically, that's a beaten egg in a little bit of water. It puts a little bit of gloss on whatever it is, changes color slightly, and we'll be using this for that. The next thing is for cooking with the eyes. We may be more than we actually think eat with our eyes. So sometimes that means we need to cook with our eyes and serve food with our eyes or for the eyes. And there's different ways to do that. Remember we talked about ramekins before in the first lesson, we talked about these things. Well, these things can be used for a couple of different things. One is to keep runny stuff off of a plate where you don't necessarily want it to run. Well, let's say you're maybe you've got a fruit salad. Well, if you don't put it in something like this, or even a, a regular bowl, maybe a cereal bowl or something, but cereal bowls look like cereal bowls, and this looks more like a, a serving bowl. Um, you're better off to put something like that, maybe something like baked beans, um, coleslaw, a variety of things serve better in a container like this than they do on a plate. It's a lot more pleasing to the eye. So one of the things that you really do need to keep in mind as becoming a serious home cook is how can I make my dishes look as appealing as they taste? First, that person's going to look down there and they're going to say, boy, that sure looks good. And you, you're already got them hooked because it looks good. If you serve them a mess on a plate and where it hardly even passed the eye test, you've already lost them. And along those lines, our plain dinnerware. And I don't mean to offend anybody who, who doesn't have plain dinnerware. This is plate, serving bowl. I have a couple of other differences in, in sizes. Why does that make a difference? It just does. <laughs> I can tell you that I, I belong to a, a, a cooking group, a Facebook group that I actually don't frequent anymore. But from there, I learned a lot about plating and what looks good on a plate and what doesn't. And the conclusion that I came to is the best fail safe place to go when plating food is on a white plate. If not white, another solid color plate. I can see a place for gray. I can see a place for white. I can see a place for red. Maybe some of the other colors, probably not so much. But the problem is, is with busy plates, something that's got divine, you know, design on, especially people's fine china. They're, they're known for all kinds of stuff. We've got china in our china cabinet. It stays there 24-7, 365. It never comes out because I would never use them for plating. It just clutters things and you can't see the food for the plate, in my opinion.
Last item up. Scoops. Oh, I lied. It's not the last item. Next to the last. Scoops. These are great for a couple of different things. I have a set of three. One, one is a size smaller than this. Um, no, they're not just for ice cream. Another place they can be used is for scooping rice or any other type of thing that is a bit of a, a solid type. Um, I'm trying to think of another place to use them besides rice. It probably for not, not in presentation wise. The other thing is one of the things we talked about last time is portion control. Um, they're great for that, especially like meatballs. Um, the smallest of one, well, depends on the size of meatball you're after. I've used the smaller one and this one for meatballs. Now for the last item. This also is for um, presentation and you can do this for various things. These are actually cookie cutters, but they can also be used and they come, I've got one for several different sizes. They can be used for pretty much anything that you want to form. I use them most for rice. Um, I, I might use it um, I certainly use them for patties. So things like a, a fish cake, crab cake, hamburger patty, anything that I want formed into something besides just freehorn and, and, and out there all over the place. These things just work terrific and they really are good for presentation. And they're really up for your creativity and how you want to go use them. Um, they aren't very expensive. A set like this will do you well over the course of your cooking time. Okay, thank you very much. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, I appreciate it if you could hit a like. Also down in the description are all the links to the Eclectic Cooking Academy website where you can get all the details about everything that's gonna come up the curriculum for the uh, entire course. I have no idea right now how many lessons there are gonna be in total. My guess is right now, probably a couple of hundred. Anyway, all the information is there. Thank you very much for being here. And if you're ready, hit that subscribe button. Thank you.